Hey everybody, it's Jalessa again, and today we're gonna work on a hollow form just like this, but instead we're gonna be using copper. So let's get started. Before we get started, I wanted to talk a little bit about the types of tubing we're gonna to use today. I figured the best way to show you how to do a hollow form was to simplify it a little bit. So we're gonna use pre-made tubing and some copper sheet. These tubes I got from probably either Lowe's or Home Depot, and you can get them in the plumbing section, and they're great use for practice. So I would highly recommend you grabbing a few of these or a bag of these. They're fairly cheap. I think it was something like $10 for a whole bag, and you can't really get copper that cheap anywhere else. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and what we're going to do first is we're going to saw this piece in half because I want to make a double-topped lid. Not a double-topped, but... I want to make a lid similar to this or a hollow form similar to this. It'll have an inner ring and then the outer ring is going to be this copper tubing. So the first thing we're going to do, if I can get this back together, is saw this piece roughly two thirds of the way. Um, the width is probably about an inch and a half. So I figured if we go about point set or 1.75, about two thirds of the way or one third of the way in, we can go ahead and have a nice little box with a cap on it. It's a little difficult to get started, but once you get started, you're okay. And it would help to put burr lube. Okay, now we have our two pieces. We've got the lid and we've got the bottom. And what we're gonna do now is take these two pieces of copper and solder one on the bottom and one on the top. That way we have lids. Okay, I've got a tip for you. The easiest way to solder these two pieces together is to take the two ends that you didn't cut because we know those are perfectly squared off and we can get a really good connection between the copper sheet that we've got and the copper tubes that we've got here. So what I'm gonna do now is set everything up for soldering and then we'll go ahead and break out the torch and do the solder. Now I use a Smith Little Torch and I've got a tip, it's called a page tip. And what this does is it distributes the heat a little bit more even than the regular tip that comes with the Smith Little Torch. So I do this when I'm working on bigger items like these. We're gonna start with the big one. And what I'm gonna do is heat the thicker portion, which is the tubing, until I can get my solder pressed up against the walls. Now you notice here I'm using a charcoal block and the reason for that is so that my heat will bounce up and underneath my sheet that I'm using for my lids. So it's the better way to distribute the heat other than a regular fire brick. So if you have a charcoal block, try it. It might be, it might go a little bit faster. My parts are out of the pickle. So now what I need to do is cut off the edges here so that I have a plain tube with a lid and a plain tube with a bottom. One thing I'd like to suggest is if you're going to be cutting these out, obviously see it, it's taking me a little bit of time, 
Um, I would recommend using a larger blade like a one or a one zero and that will help you cut through the metal faster. So now we have our two pieces cut out. This is the lid and that's the bottom part. And what we're going to do now is flatten out these edges by sanding them and filing them. One way to figure out whether or not your edges are flat, if you take a Sharpie and mark around the edge while you're sanding it, it'll remove the Sharpie. And then once it's completely flat, all the way around the edges, you won't have any Sharpie left. For this next step, you're going to need a piece of copper sheet, your calipers, dial calipers or digital caliper, calipers, it doesn't matter, and a calculator in order to calculate the inner diameter. So the first thing we need to do is measure the outside diameter of our tubing. And this is 24.42. And that gives us the outer diameter. Let's measure the thickness And that is 1.22. Let me remeasure that. Measure it a couple of times around the outside and then take the average because you want to make sure that you got the right inner diameter so that you can calculate the correct amount of sheet that you're going to need. Yep, 1.22 is the inner or the thickness of the metal. Now, one thing that I use is a dry erase marker. I have a metal bench block here that I use to write down my measurements so that I don't have to keep measuring over and over again because I can't remember what the measurement was. So I write that on my bench. And then when I'm finished, I can just erase it. So we're gonna take 24.42 and subtract the thickness of the metal, 1.22, and we get an inner diameter of this tube of 23.20. So we need to take that 23.20 and subtract the thickness of the metal sheet that we're gonna do. So we need to measure that as well. And that is 0.82, which is basically a 20 gauge, um, 20 gauge sheet. So if we take the 2320 minus 0.82 times 3.14, we get a length, oops, I did that wrong, 20.22, oops, 23, 23.22 minus 0.82, that gives us 22.4 times pi, 3.14, and we get a length of 70.334. So we need to measure 70.334. So I'm going to set my calipers to 70.3. I'm going to go just 70.3 or 73.434. Sorry. I'm going to mark that on my sheet. In order for me to be able to see it a little bit better, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Sharpie and mark this so that I can actually see my scratch marks a little bit easier. So 70.34 is roughly about there. 
Now, the next thing we need to do is measure the height of our tubing so that we can make a correct height or width of the inner ring that we're going to be making. So the height is 13.4. So I'm gonna write that down so I don't forget. So I'm gonna set my calipers for 13.4. plus two millimeters. So 13.4 will be 15.4. And the reason for that is because I want a little bit of metal to stick out of this lid here so that I can friction fit it inside the bottom portion of the um, hollow form. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is cut this out, make it into a ring, and then solder it. So now I have a nice clean joint that I can solder. One of the most important things is to take your time doing this because you wanna make sure that your joint is really tight. That way, when you solder it and stick it on the inside, you'll be able to find out whether or not it fits a lot easier. Um, you don't wanna have your joints to be unsoldered. Even though it's gonna be on the inside, you still want it to look nice. So I always spend extra time to make sure that my joints are clean. So if you notice here, I have my um, piece of copper on a charcoal block because what I wanna do is make the heat bounce up and make it a little bit easier to solder. So the first thing I'm gonna do is flex my joint. I use Battern self-pickling. Not everybody uses it. I find that it forces me to make sure that my joints are clean. So. If you're not sure if your joint is clean, go ahead and wash it down really well with a degreasing soap, like a Dawn dish soap or something like that. And you'll be sure to have a clean joint. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I like to place my solder on the underneath of my work. That way I can pull it through the top and it's a little bit easier for me to see whether or not the joint has completely closed. So you can see a nice clean joint right here, straight up and down. Yes, I have a little bit of excess solder, but that's okay because I'm gonna be soldering this to the inside of my lid, so it's okay for that extra, excess solder to be there. My inner ring is out of the pickle, and what I'm gonna do next is check to make sure that the fit is tight in both the bottom and the top. So I'm gonna take this side first and place it in the top, and I want it to fit snug. And if it doesn't quite get in there, you can take a file and file off some of that excess solder in the areas that it's sticking. There we go. You wanna keep testing it. So the top part fits. Now let's check the bottom part. Not quite, so I'm gonna File off a little bit of this excess solder here. And test it again. Perfect. So now I got a nice top join and a nice bottom join. So I can solder these together now. So I'm gonna go ahead and place, well, first I'm gonna go to the soldering board. Okay, here we are at the soldering board. Now I'm gonna take and Flex both pieces first and then stick them together and then make the solder joint. So we'll do the inside of this one. 
and the inside and outside of that one. Put them together. All the way to the bottom. I'm going to reflex the top because I've been touching it. And then I'm going to place my solder all along this rim here and then heat the whole thing and get the solder to flow down into the other tube. I can place this in the pickle and test it against my bottom part again. So my lid is out of the pickle. Now I'm going to retest it with the bottom just to make sure it fits. It should be snug and it fits. So the last thing I need to do is sand and clean up the outsides and I'm actually going to leave my little rim here. I'm just going to clean it up because I like the idea of having something to hold on to to push it in and push it out. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up right now. So today we made a copper hollow form. And we made it out of two simple pieces of metal. Copper tubing from the Lowe's or Home Depot and a piece of copper sheet. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye. So in this video, we made a copper hollow form. I guess I should shoot.